Hello everyone, welcome back to my study and to Dongit's Model Railway. I'm working on the lift out bridge again. At the end of the track laying video, the bridge was mechanically complete and stock was rolling across it, but it wasn't wired. There were only droppers on the track, nothing else. I tried to record wiring the approach tracks to the bridge without using the work lights that interfere with the camera. But even with a rare bright day in winter, the moment I get in the way, this area becomes a black hole under here and it's quite hard for you to see what's going on. Honestly, it wasn't much better for me either, so I'm going to need the light to work under here. You can immediately see the effect of these lights on the camera, unfortunately, and this only gets worse the darker the area gets, like between the two horizontal support beams where most of the approach track wiring needs to go. I do have an earlier video, linked here with clearer lighting, which goes through how I wire up each block section for independent detection. So let's skip over wiring the rest of the approach tracks. Time to mount some electronics. The southwest panel hasn't seen anything on it at all yet. The plan says this needs two ABC boards, a DTC board, and a V out board to control them. It may also get something to control signals. Signal controllers haven't been designed yet, so the number and placing for these has yet to be determined. But this panel is conveniently located near several signals and should have space for one if I lay out the electronics in an efficient manner. This is where I should have realised I'd messed up. This is not an appropriate place to mount this board if the screwdriver is going to go here. It would intersect with future scenery. The electronics here is conventionally laid out the same way I've done the entire rest of the layout, with ABC in the red wire and train detection in the black wire. That's only true of the southbound tracks on the bridge though, it will need to be different for the northbound tracks. That's a better location for the ABC board. This is a new iteration of the DTC board, courtesy of channel sponsor PCBWay. This is a revised version derived from the Merg design. We modified it to use mostly surface mount components. We have added power supply smoothing and reverse current protection. We have also swapped the ribbon cable socket and screw terminals for ones we prefer. I had five of these created and assembled by PCBWay using their SMT assembly service. They arrived with all the surface mount components already installed and ready to go. They still required the two turn current transformers hand wound afterwards, as these cannot be machine assembled. Having a batch of five surface mount boards assembled by PCBWay like this is an affordable way to have a small run of surface mount boards assembled. These boards will also make wiring the layout easier, as I won't have to make up quite so many odd cables to connect things with different socket types. You can learn more about making these boards in the video linked here, and sign up with PCBWay to order your own PCBs with or without surface mount component assembly with the link in the description below. The northwest panel is also pretty empty. The DCC controller, booster and USB interface currently live here, but there's no layout electronics yet. The only track wired in at the moment is the programming track on the workbench, and that doesn't need detection or braking control. I'll need one DTC and one ABC board here, plus a V-out and a servo controller board. There's plenty of space in here for that. Let's start with the DTC and the ABC board.
Access into this area isn't too bad, but two arms plus a camera at the same time is a bit of a tight squeeze. I'm going to do the block wiring here off camera because it's probably going to turn into the arm show otherwise. My use of electrical tape to insulate soldered joints has been debated in the comments previously, with the suggestion made that I should be using heat shrink instead. Heat shrink does have a few restrictions that need to be accommodated. It requires pre-planning. You have to thread the heat shrink tubing onto the wire before making the joint, otherwise you'll be unable to install it. This means retrofitting the existing section of the layout is not possible. It also does not support a T-shaped joint. You must lay the wires parallel away from the solder joint. It's also one of those things, like crimping, that you have endless trouble with if you don't have the proper tools. Just like trying to make a successful crimp connection with a pair of pliers is very hit and miss, if you're trying to install heat shrink by waving a soldering iron near it, it's going to give inconsistent to poor results. With the right tools, however, like this new heat gun and curved reflector that I've treated myself to, it works much more consistently. The ABC for the northbound tracks, fed from the northern peninsula, are operated the opposite way to the rest of the layout to date, which has always run with the red rail on the right going forwards. These now need the ABC boards in the black rail to keep it in the right rail heading forward. It would also be possible to still wire it in the red rail, but swap the terminals round so the diodes are pointing in the opposite direction. There are arguments in favour of both options. Ultimately, which way you choose is personal preference, but I thoroughly recommend picking one convention and sticking to it. Don't wire a layout in an inconsistent way. Part of the safety arrangement for the bridge is that the tracks are fed from the destination side, so that any approaching train will enter a dead section before getting to the bridge if it is not in place. The four bridge tracks are paired by function, alternating northbound, southbound, northbound, southbound. The wiring on the bridge itself is much less conventional and install. Because I am detecting occupancy on each line independently, I still need separate block wires for each track, including right across the bridge. I am also including a separate wiring loop through the plugs, so I can inform the computer running the signalling if the plugs are not connected. This will mean I can prevent any trains being routed into the incomplete blocks if the bridge is removed or disconnected, including if it is disconnected at one end only. In total, I have to hide 10 wires in this bridge, there isn't a lot of vertical thickness to the base, and lots of it is exposed. I really don't want anything below the bridge in the middle. There's a functional reason, this is a duck under while the bridge is in place, and also an aesthetic reason, preserving the silhouette of the bridge when viewed from the side. I'm not so worried about wires coming down near the ends, so I'm going to drop the wires below the bridge to plug in at either end. I'm not going to try and integrate the electrical connections inside the mechanical connections at each end. The droppers are located at each end of the bridge, adjacent to the ends of the frame. This will also set the point where the wires drop down to connect with the rest of the layout at both ends of the bridge. The wires between these points will run along each side of the main frame, paired on the closest side for each track. The droppers are short, to keep the wires up close underneath the bridge. If you are enjoying this video, or finding it useful, hit the like button. If you want to see more of my layout or the stock I run on it, hit the subscribe button. If you have a question, comment or suggestion, write it in the comment section below. I'm using these 15 pin D connectors to connect the bridge to the layout. They are keyed so they cannot be connected the wrong way round, they have enough pins to do what I need with a single connection, and they will cope with the required amperage. But the primary reason I selected these is because I already have them in stock.
I'm securing the main run of wires to the sides of the frame for the bridge. I tried a variety of ways to handle this, and pushing staples in using a pair of pliers turned out to be the best solution. With the bridge wired and in place, we now have wiring from here, through a connector here, along the bridge, to another connector here, oh, which is unplugged. Oops, better fix that. Okay, that's better. The wiring is now connected all the way through to under here. Time for some testing. I don't have the automatic braking setup working on this section yet. That requires the V-out board in both the Northwest and Southwest electronics cluster, which I don't have yet. That means the ABC is permanently on, but I've configured shunt mode on this loco to ignore the ABC. That's handy when operating for real if you need to run past a red signal to do something like couple to a train. But it's also useful when testing if the ABC isn't working properly, like now. The pantograph is raised because I'm also testing for clearance at the same time. The expectation for this layout is to operate electrics with raised pantographs.
That's all four tracks working as intended, and plenty of pantograph clearance through both bridges. I need the V-out boards to add these new blocks to the layout control system so I can extend the signalling out to here. I also need to lay some more track. Up and over the small bridge should be relatively straightforward. After that I need to lay some points, the first visible points on the layout. See you next time up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.